Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick at stridewise.com. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a close look at the Red Wing Iron Ranger. So Red Wing is indisputably one of the most popular names in American boots, and the Iron Ranger may just be their best known model. It's often seen worn by celebrities like Dave Franco and Bradley Cooper, although it's actually deeply tied to the company's origins in Minnesota. Back in the 1920s, Red Wing used to make footwear for the miners toiling inside the Masabi Iron Range, although today it's less often seen in mines and more often seen in their fashion-focused Red Wing Heritage line. So I'm going to take a closer look at this model. I know classic is a word that gets thrown around a lot when describing American-made boots, but nonetheless, that is the word that comes to mind when I look at a pair of Red Wing Iron Ranges. These boots are beautiful, but they're simple, they're tough, but subtle. Above all, they really screen durability. They've got a very thick leather, a lot thicker than many of their contemporaries. They've got a 270 degree Goodyear welt along the sole, and they're also triple stitched along the vamp. Although, as you can see, only the middle stitch is really visible because that's the only white one. So that gives it a more understated look while definitely demonstrating its durability. Probably the most important feature here, or the most notable feature, is the toe cap, which is actually stitched to the vamp with two layers of double stitching. But while it does make for a pretty interesting looking boot, it's always very easy to spot a pair of Iron Ranges, it does make for a boot that's a bit more bulbous than your standard boots like, say, the Wolverine Thousand Mile or Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. It's still slimmer than like a Timberland or a construction boot, but nonetheless, this isn't a sleek boot. It's a little bit harder to dress up with the toe cap and the nickel eyelets and the speed hooks here. It's a little bit hard to pull it off in formal situations. Nonetheless, I think they have a pretty good design here, which makes it easy to wear on the street or in a bar or at a friend's house or at work, which I think, honestly, that's a pretty tough design feat that they've pulled off. So let's talk about this leather. The Iron Ranger has a very thick leather. It's more than two millimeters thick, which is really unusually thick compared to some of its contemporaries. It makes it more durable. It's also a little bit harder to break in. And this is a full grain leather. So full grain leather comes from the top layer of the hide of the animal. It's usually compared with top grain leather. Top grain leather is similar, but it has that top surface sanded away. Generally speaking, top grain leather is more uniform in color, but it's not quite as durable. Full grain leather, it's more durable. It is nonetheless more likely to have inconsistencies in the color, but most people don't find that a big deal because it makes it much more likely to get that rich patina as it ages, which is what people really like with their good, well-made and uh, more highly priced leather boots. Now, that said, not all of the Iron Rangers come in this kind of leather. There's also the charcoal and the copper, which are called rough and tough leather. That's still full grain leather, but it's much more moist and it needs a little bit less conditioning when compared to the regular full grain leather that you have in these amber harness boots here. When it comes to leather care, these here are oil tanned leather. According to Red Wing, that makes them pretty resistant against water and stains and perspiration. And before it leaves the Red Wing factory, they condition it with their own leather oil that's made from a combination of mink oil and pine pitch. Depending on how often you wear them, you're gonna to wanna to condition them every few months and also give them a bit of a brush down when they get dirty. Personally, I've been using Obenaus oil on these. Obenaus is a mixture of tree resin and beeswax. I've had these for about a year. As you can see, it's dark in the leather quite a bit, the oil that I've been using. That's okay, that's to be expected. There really aren't many ways of conditioning leather that won't darken the leather a bit. Even Red Wing's own leather oil will darken the leather. But if you're really, really attached to the color of your boots, they also have a leather cream that's Neat's Foot oil based, and that can help to preserve the original color if that's really important to you. As I mentioned, they've got a couple of other kinds of leather for their boots. The Rough and Tough, you can use the same oil on that, Urban Alphs or their own leather oil. You probably only need to condition that one once or twice a year because it's a very, very moist kind of leather. And they also have a rough out leather for their, uh, for their Hawthorne mule skin leather shoe. And for that one, you're gonna wanna use like a rubber suede cleaner and you don't wanna use oil on that because that can ruin the fuzziness of it. You'd rather use like a non-silicone based waterproofing spray. When it comes to the size, you definitely wanna to get about a half size smaller than what you normally wear. These do run large. Personally, I'm an 11.75, which is a very frustrating shoe size. I wear a size 12 in Converse sneakers. These are a size 11 and they fit me really well. There are an 11D, technically. The D refers to the width of the shoe. D is considered normal, but these boots also come in double E for guys with extra wide shoes. So that could be good news for some folks. That's not as wide as boots get. Some boots go up to triple E. This is just double E. Nonetheless, for guys with wider shoes, they could be happy with the Iron Rangers. 
Now, traditionally, the Red Wing Iron Ranger has been made with a nitrite cork sole that is a little bit more durable than your standard leather sole, although it still does slip quite a bit in slippery conditions. But that doesn't even matter because as of summer 2018, Red Wing decided to change all of the soles of the Red Wing Iron Rangers to a 7mm Vibram mini lug sole. So the Vibram, that is a type of rubber. It is a lot more durable. It absorbs shock a lot better. Most importantly, it has a lot more traction. So these boots with the nitride cork sole, I've often slipped on them in uh, icy conditions or wet conditions. The Vibram soles, they really minimize that issue. So it could be really good news. It looks a bit less classic and traditional. Nonetheless, I do think it was an improvement. So you get the Vibram, that's gonna be the outsole. Then the midsole is cork and then insole is leather. And there is a steel shank down the middle uh, in the midsole, which is meant to contour to the shape of your foot. So over time, the cork and the leather and the steel shank, they will mold around the shape of your foot to make for a boot that fits better and uh, just, just it's gonna become more you as you wear them. That said, I didn't think the arch support was great in these shoes. Nonetheless, uh, they do break in. They, are, they do progressively get more comfortable as you wear them. They're really tough at the get-go. Finally, there is a Goodyear welt on these boots. The Goodyear welt is generally considered to be the best way to welt boots because it is pretty water resistant. Also, it makes it a lot easier to resole them as they age, which means the boots will last a lot longer if you just take care of the leather. The difference with these boots is that it is a 270 degree Goodyear welt, which means the stitching kind of ends around the heel here. Practically, that doesn't make a huge difference. It makes them a tiny bit less water resistant. But the main reason a lot of people like the 270 degree welt is for the aesthetic benefits. It makes for a slimmer, sleeker silhouette around the heel. So that could be good news for guys that really focus on the fashion aspect. Now, as far as the price goes, these are generally considered mid-range boots. The cost is $320. That's how much they cost on Amazon and Nordstrom and Red Wing's official website right now. I think that price does reflect the fact that they're pretty well made and they're pretty durable as well. They're not crazy expensive. Nonetheless, they do have a price that's a bit tough for some people to afford. I would recommend if $320 is a bit much, Nordstrom often puts them on sale a few times a year where they dip below $300. So that's something you might wanna keep an eye out for. So I think there are a few reasons why this could be a good buy for a lot of guys. Number one, I keep saying this word, but it is quite durable. It's got nice thick leather. I think it's hard to find boots with leather this thick that you can look comfortable wearing them in a bar or out in the town without looking like you should probably be camping. It's one thing that I really liked. It's also got this nice 270 degree Goodyear welt. So it's pretty resistant to the elements. It's got the triple stitching. This really is a boot that can take a beating without looking like you should be wearing them in a factory. So that's something I really liked about these. On top of that, I do like the style. I like the, uh, the very distinctive toe cap here. These are distinctive boots while being relatively versatile. And also, I think the price point is really good. It's $320. That's expensive enough to know that you're getting something that's high quality, but not so expensive that you don't know why you're spending that much. There are a few reasons you might not be quite so crazy about the Iron Ranger. One of the downsides of this thick leather is that it is pretty tough to break in. It did take a good few days to wear it without it hurting my feet. There's also no leather lining, which, can make, which could make it a bit more comfortable. So as far as comfort goes, there leaves something to be desired, especially in those first few weeks of wear. On top of that, the main issue that I had with this boot, honestly, I did say it was versatile in that you could wear it at a friend's place or out to a bar, but I don't think it's very easy to dress up. It's got this pretty bulbous toe here, plus with the nickel eyelets and the speed hooks, it's just not sleek enough. It's not formal enough to really work in like with slacks or in a slightly more formal situation, especially when compared to say the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill or even the Wolverine 1000 Mile, I think has a beat when it comes to formality and versatility. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. Okay, so that's my thoughts on the Red Wing Iron Ranger. To learn more about the best boots on the market, just make sure you hit the subscribe button below.